There have been some pretty on-the-nose names in motorsports in the past, Lake Speed, Scott Speed, Stingray Rob, but one that is pretty perfect for F1 is Zhou Guan Yu. See, written in his native language, his name is three characters. Using a Chinese Hansi dictionary, I found out that the first one is Zhou, his family name, but the character can mean to make a circuit or lap. The second character, Guan, can mean to be first and is often paired with other characters to mean champion or championship. The last one, Yu, can mean room or universe. So in other words, if you take a bit of creative liberties when translating the meaning of his name into English, you could argue it means circuit champion of the universe, which is a pretty auspicious name for a driver. Zhou Guan Yu was born the 30th of May in 1999 in the Chinese mega city of Shanghai. Shanghai is one of the largest cities in the world. There are many things in the city, delicious food, interesting architecture, and links of coastal views. But one thing there isn't is a door to Formula One which is why a young Zhou would travel more than 9,000 kilometers to the UK, then Italy, and back to London before reaching the paddocks of F1. Supporting him on his journey was his family, who largely liked to stay private. Now investigating this next part I found quite fun, because I enjoy languages, especially logographic ones. So by reading and translating Chinese articles, I was able to determine that his mother has went unnamed, but it's likely she comes from a family associated with the automotive industry, most likely in sales, much like her husband. While she likes to remain private, she has played a large role in her son's success. She left Shanghai and accompanied her son on his European journey. She also rarely missed a race. Her husband remained in Shanghai so their daughter could stay in her same school and he could attend to business matters. One article I read called Joe's father an invisible rich man. However, business records have determined his official name is Zhou Wenfang. They also list him as the sole proprietor or co-owner of 15 to 23 different entities, some of which are shared with his brother Yongfang, and at least four of which are named after his son. According to 2017 industry rankings, Guan Yu automobile sales broke in the top 100 in the country at an amount of 3.2 billion won, or roughly 450 million euros. His automotive enterprise started in the city of Weifang and now stretches all across the Shandong province. The overall value of his businesses is hard to estimate due to the number of potential entries, how information is presented in China, and the language barrier for myself. That being said, some tabloid-like sources have suggested he has a net worth between 20 and 40 billion Chinese won, but I cannot confirm that, so don't take that as fact. Even at a young age, Zhou found himself playing with all sorts of toys circling around cars. When Formula One had their first Grand Prix in Shanghai, China in 2004, the family took their five-year-old son to the race. Guan Yu started to develop an interest in the sport and did his best to follow along and learn more. He decided Fernando Alonso was his favorite driver, saying he was fast, talented, and exciting. So when F1 returned to Shanghai a year later, the boy cheered on his driver, waving a Fernando flag. Of course, Alonso would win both the pole and the race, solidifying Zhou's fandom. At this age, Zhou remembers playing with his toy cars, setting up races, and acting as a commentator, voicing out the action that occurred. He went to school, enjoyed swimming, playing football, and later would take an interest in basketball. But all of the toys he ever asked for as a child centered around cars. His parents took notice of this, and around age 7, they took him to an indoor kart track. Being young, his first time on the track was riding in a passenger seat of a two-person cart with his father. He remembers the whole 10 minute session, he kept his eyes shut out of fear. When finished, they asked if he wanted to try it solo, but he said he was too afraid and was ready to go home. They insisted he try it while they were there, and when he got behind the wheel, everything changed and he instantly fell in love. Young Guan Yu would beg to return to the track on weekends when able. After multiple visits, the track manager told them they had an outdoor track designed for real races where you could even bring your own cart to drive and suggested he enter some races there. Seeing his son's enthusiasm, Wen Fong was determined to train his son to become the best he could be. Zhou started entering races at age 8 and immediately his determination would be tested. In his first start, a driver behind would lose control and crash, going over top of him. Fortunately, his head was fine and only his arm was bruised. Afterwards, his mother was worried, but her son was persistent in his desire to continue karting. In 2008, 9-year-old Zhou would be crowned champion of the Shanghai Karting League. In addition, he would enter the National Karting Championship for ages 8 to 12. He would finish on the podium in his first race and in the championship in third as the best newcomer. During this year, Zhou's father would reportedly spend upwards of 12 million yuan to build Guan Yu Car Park on some property he owned in the city of Weifang. This karting facility was built to international standards and potentially was the most modern arena in the country. This way his son could practice at his leisure. 
Heading into 2009, the venue hosted events like the Weifang First International Karting Invitational and the AGF Shanghai Karting Grand Prix, which Zhou would win in the youngest division. Unfortunately, reports say the track no longer exists, but instead across the street from the lot resides the Guan Yu Driving Range if you're into a different kind of driving. While certainly given a helping hand from his father, Zhou had a determination and maturity beyond his age. Local sport articles from the area report how the boy spent his weekends practicing karting and doing physical conditioning. He didn't spend much time chatting to the other boys at the track because he said they were immature and didn't want to waste time or lose focus. Already at age 10, when asked the question what price was he willing to pay for racing, his answer was anything. This would be tested in a race where his cart would suffer a mechanical failure and part of the engine would strike his arm. His cart continued running until it stopped on the final lap. After, he told his mother of the pain in his arm. It couldn't be seen from outside the suit, but where the part had struck his arm had left a leisure to which the suit had melded into. He had to be taken to the hospital to have the suit separated from his arm and receive stitches. After this, he wouldn't wear short sleeves while the scar remained. In 2009, he would win the Shanghai Karting League and the National Karting Championship in the Group A Junior class. In 2010, he would enter the National Karting Championship in the Group B Junior Division. He would win the Best Newcomer Award by dominating the championship, winning all eight rounds, which is still a record. The Zhou family knew that a few Chinese drivers had ventured into European competition, but they did it late in their careers. If their son wanted a chance to become the F1 driver they hoped, he would needed to go as soon as possible to gain more experience and exposure. In the summer of 2010, Zhou would drive a race in Japan and a few in the UK. He said it was the first time he ever felt tired and challenged in karting. In 2011, he would return to the UK in the Trent Valley Kart Club Championship. He finished 10th in the standings. The karting scene in China was growing, but the United Kingdom, it was on another level. At the end of 2011, age 12, Guan Yu and his mother would move to Sheffield, England. They moved here because it was the base of the Tony Kart supported team, Strawberry Racing. Zhou remembers the first week and a half he was in England, he barely understood a single word in class. He attended the same school as the team manager's son and spent the majority of his time with the team going between school, the track, and studying English. Things on track also started rough. Being the only Chinese driver, he was treated like an outsider and often pushed off track and bumped into. However, he quickly started to earn respect on track with his performances. In his first year in the Super 1 National Rotax Minimax Championship, he would finish 4th, scoring 95% of the points of the winner. In 2013, he would finish 3rd in 2 series, 2nd in the Winter Cup, and be the overall winner in the Super 1 Nationals and Junior Euro Challenge, becoming the first driver from China to win a European Karting Championship. Again, in 2014, he would finish 2nd in the Senior Winter Cup and Senior Euro Challenge. He would also complete a mix of races in different classes in the WSK Karting Series. Based on his karting results in 2013, and their multi-year association with the Chinese Automobile Federation, the Ferrari Driver Academy contacted Zhou to join them in 2014 for a two-day test in Marinello in an F3 car. His performance was enough that in June of 2014, he joined the Ferrari family. Zhou said it was a massive boost for his confidence that one of the biggest names in motorsports had contacted him but it also added more pressure to perform and not waste opportunities. Of course, it also meant he was in the same brand as his childhood hero. At the end of the year, he joined the Prima Power team for his first start in a Formula car, getting two podiums in two races in the Italian Formula 4 Adria Winner Trophy. In 2015, he would do eight races for Prima in the ADAC Formula 4, scoring two podiums. Back in Italy, he would finish second in the Italian Formula 4 series, scoring two poles, nine podiums, and three victories. His time in German F4 had caught the attention of the Motopark team who invited him to an end of year F3 test. After being impressed by the results, he signed to drive for them in F3 in the following year. In the winter, Zhou would join the M2 competition team and drive in the Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand. He would get three third places and a victory at Hampton Downs in Waikato. When Formula 3 started, in the first two weekends he would score points in all but one round and get two podiums but the rest of the year was hit or miss. Three DNFs and points in nine of the remaining 21 rounds. Unfortunately, he would finish 13th in points. In 2017, the Ferrari Driver Academy would re-strengthen their ties with the Prima team. As such, Zhou would join them for F3. This year would go better. No victories, but five podiums and regularly in the points, finishing eighth at season's end. At the end of the year, Zhou was happy with where he was at, but disappointed he was unable to recapture past successes in F3. He knew in 2018 he needed to make a step forwards. 
The year started well. He won the first race in France, and in mid-season at Spa, he had gotten four other podiums and was one point off championship lead of teammate Marcus Armstrong. He qualified well in Spa, but in two of the three races that weekend, he was taken out by another teammate. After the mid-season, things in the series sort of flipped. He would only get one more podium and a victory at Hockenheim. When you dig into the 2018 F3 series, there's a lot of speculation from sources as to what caused the change in the pecking order. All Joe has said on it was, even now I don't know what happened there. All I can say is that I lost all the speed I had without changing my driving too much. I was fighting for the championship and then was struggling to make top 10 in qualifying, so it was a very tough season. He finished 8th in points, but on a positive note, midway through the year he was announced as a development driver for the Tachita Formula E team. At the end of 2018, Zhou drove the F2 test in Abu Dhabi for the Russian Time team, and was looking to compete for the team the following year. Meanwhile, the Renault F1 team had said they'd been watching Zhou's junior career and were impressed, not to mention having him in their brand was a strategic business option for markets in China. Going into 2019, Guan Yu parted Ferrari and joined the Renault Driver Academy, citing seeing more opportunities to be involved in their Formula 1 sim work and test days. He would get multiple test days, but bigger still was his opportunity to drive in front of his home crowd at that year's Chinese Grand Prix. He did a street side demonstration run and made his first ever laps on the Shanghai International Circuit. Driving for Uni Virtuosi in F2, he would have a solid debut season. He would have two DNFs and only finish outside of the points twice, scoring the first pole for a Chinese driver in F2 and five podiums across the year. At the end, he would be the best placed rookie and be the first recipient of the Antoine Hubert Award. In his time with Renault, he had become close friends with Daniel Ricciardo, but also with the other Renault juniors. When the accident involving Antoine occurred at Spa, Joe said he was two cars ahead in the queue and saw the first car spinning. Hearing the news of what had happened to his friend was devastating, but he never questioned if he should stop racing. His family had given so much effort, and drivers know the potential risks when they put on a helmet. Two weekends later in Sochi, all Renault juniors wore helmets with Hubert's design on them as tribute. Zhou said he keeps his next to his award in his office at home in China. Heading into 2020, Zhou was promoted to an official test driver role for the Renault F1 team. The year wouldn't start right away, however, thanks to the global health concerns. As a result, he would become the first victor for the Renault F1 team in a Grand Prix since its hero Fernando Alonso in 2008, albeit virtually in the F1 Virtual Bahrain Grand Prix. When F2 started in earnest, Zhou hit the series taking pole in the first race. He would lead most of the race in Austria before having electrical problems causing him to fall to 17th, costing him his first victory. Over the year, he would get six podiums and win a shortened race in Sochi after a crash damaged the barriers. He finished sixth in points, but had the first race went differently, he could have finished as high as fourth. This year, he also took part in the three test sessions for Renault, including driving alongside Alonso in Abu Dhabi. 2021 started the Zhou rejoining Prima for the F3 Asian Championship, where he would get 6 poles, 12 podiums, and 4 victories in 15 races, winning the championship. In F2, he remained with Uni Virtuosi for a third season. He took pole in the first round in Bahrain, and he would go on to convert that into a podium and his first feature race win. During the year, he would get 9 podiums, 4 being victories, and would be leading the championship heading into the fourth round of the season, even after bad wet weather strategy in Monaco and a brake failure in Baku. However, a mistake in Silverstone would see him losing his lead to Oscar Piastri. He would claw back some ground over the next few rounds, but heading to the grid in Sochi would see both him and teammate Felipe Djokovic spinning on dry tires and damp conditions. After a collision in the penultimate weekend in Jeddah, Joe was still mathematically in for the title, but realistically out of it. He would get a victory and a podium in the last two races of the year, and finish third in points. During the 2021 year, Zhou would become the second driver from China after Ma Qinghua to participate in an F1 weekend. He was making his free practice debut in Austria in Fernando Alonso's car, and during the track walk, Alonso actually showed up to walk with him and give him his personal tips and tricks. When the session finished, he was half a second off teammate Ocon's time on softs, even though he was on mediums. It was all very surreal to him, and this performance turned some heads. It was known in the paddock that after Silverstone, the only seat left for 2022 was at Alfa Romeo. He said when he received the call from the team later in the year, he was glad he was at home, because when he heard the news from his manager, he was speechless and broke into tears of joy. He was completely released from the Alpine Academy in order to accept his new position. 
It was also reported that he brought roughly 28 million euros worth of sponsorship to the team in a mix of his family businesses, Chinese corporations, and his longtime partnership with Hublot Watches. His first year in F1 has been a bit of a mix. Points on debut, finishes just outside of the points, monster crash at Silverstone, and a further four DNFs that mostly haven't been his fault. In 2023, the team hopes to make steps forward. Both him and Valtteri have a similar driving style which benefits car development and Botas has been an outstanding mentor to the rookie. Zhou has managed to become the first Chinese F1 driver thanks to support, ability, and timing that others haven't had. But besides fulfilling his own dreams, his success means a lot of different things to millions of people around the globe. Many people in his home country compare his breakthrough to that of past stars like Yao Ming or Liu Xiang. So Zhou is really excited to go home for the Chinese Grand Prix. Someday. Hello and thanks for watching this video and any others on the channel you may have seen, it does mean a lot. I am still trying to find ways to improve the videos and the channel in general. I have a few ideas in mind, but execution is different than thought. But going forwards, the next subject of my video will be a driver who deserves a shampoo sponsor, because he used to have the most green day Blink-182 sleeping with sirens looking haircut, and I approved. So to find out who that is, be sure to subscribe and come back later. But until then, I'll see you next time on Driver Profiles.